everybody welcome back i hope you liked that first part of the video um we're gonna teach you how to solo out your coon dog um so the last video i was talking about the bark and gave you some tips on how to get that bark out of them maybe coax them into barking at something a little bit different than a scent dry or something like that leash them pups back all right let's talk about track tracking should come more natural than anything to any coon dog i mean they're pushing track all day long um when you're messing around with your dog out in the yard or you got them out if their nose ain't glued to that ground i mean they're not using their nose now you got your dog barking at your toy and ain't ran too many drags or anything advanced maybe just a little something something around the house something like that what we're going to do is we're going to transfer over now we're going to get your dog from being leashed back and really letting it rip on this coon scent and we're going to run a drag for it okay we're going to run a simple little drag for it and we're going to tie it up in a tree where they can see you you're going to they'll see you the whole entire time Okay, so you got them leashed back, you got them barking at it, you run a drag that they can see you run, you can hang it in a tree, they can see you hang it in. This is going to be their first one, right? Um, it's important that when you're first starting out with these little simple drags is that you're walking the track to and from. So you're walking in the same exact line that you drug it in, you're walking that back, okay? Because you're not going to overcomplicate it for your puppy, it's the simplest, easiest thing that you can do. It's just double back on your track when you come back to cut the dog off. Um, pups barking. Hopefully as you run on the drag, it's going to keep barking, hanging in the tree. It's going to keep barking. Head back to the puppy the same way that you drug it. Cut it off. Dog should go, especially if it's visible when it gets to the tree. Um, don't forget to rub it on the side of the tree on the bottom real good. I usually give her five or six good big old rubs. That way it's not missable. Um... And hang it down uh, in eyesight, not too high for a little pup because they they won't even bother with it. Um, one good thing is have a good judgment of how tall your pup is when it's up in training position because you want that probably uh, just a few good inches above the pup's nose when it's in full tree position. Um, because what you don't want to have happen um, is it be too high and they can't find it, they can't see it, they can't pay attention to it. Um, little pups they're not too curious about stuff that they can't see um so when you go and you run that drag for them if it's too low what they'll do is they'll just go up the tree and grab it down and then you blew the opportunity to have your puppy tree um so we're going to run a drag simple drag hanging the tree just high enough where it's just out of their reach uh, maybe they can put their nose on it but they can't get it um and they're already hyped up looking for this toy you ain't fed them um, you probably probably best if you leave them put up for a few days prior don't get any play time save their energy up and then do this because you'll get the best results out of that I think you could possibly get um, so you get them rolling in they, they got to be really be going after it they can't just be yipping at it or a little bit you got to get these dogs rolling on these things when you're talking about the bark um, you got to get them settling in and going after it um so once they're good enough and this varies by age it may be a good time to do this around three months old four months old somewhere in there it really varies on the age of the puppy and the maturity of the puppy and the drive of the pup and some it just comes with the bloodlines or whatever you're running so it's a good gauge if you know what your uh you know what your dog's about so whenever the good time is i usually do mine try them out the first time right around three months old and that seems to be a really good good start you can get some good results right around that age and it's a good puppy stage um so you can get your pup you can cut it off hopefully the it's going to run over there smell around the tree maybe run uh the first one it might not have its nose on the ground it may or may not if it does good we're not looking for that we're looking for that point a bark and point b bark um so we're going to get them to the tree stand back don't follow them over there okay um, some pups they'll just go halfway come back you got to coax them over there help them find their way over there point at the ground get them to pick up the scent and just kind of coax them on over to the tree other pups will just 
blister over there and get right on the tree. Um, so once your pup gets over there on a the tree, um, depending on the pup, you might have to show it the um, the toy in the tree and then you get it riled up and get it barking and praise it for barking on a tree after that toy. And you just play with the, uh, you got it on a string, so you're just going to drop it up and down, get the puppy barking at it, going for it real good. Um, be careful because um, pups don't like being put in awkward positions and it's really easy to get a dog to fall over or fall back on their tail or or just not get a good position and it's, it's really smart um, don't pick a tree that's too skinny because a skinny tree a dog can't tree on you gotta pick you a nice big wide tree that's got enough space for your pup to actually get up on and be stable um, they don't mess around too much with too wobbly stuff maybe pick a tree that ain't got a big bunch of roots sticking out of the bottom you want to give your pup the best chance that it can to get on that tree and stay there uh, and start letting off some good barks three month old pup should have pretty good mouth on it and it should be pretty good attention span a little bit of drive going in them and uh get up on that tree and let it rip for you and get them petted up real good um, so this is going to be the beginning part of your track um i know i'm going to break this video up in these three parts but um i think i'm going to the next section of this video about the tree i'm going to go over all the extra stuff and after the fact but this is just laying that groundwork to get you started and rolling on these pups and this is a good start here um, you always want to start with the toy that you started with have it around the house and all that and that's going to be your first little drags um, once you get a successful drag which a successful drag being that your dog has barked point a and point b so on the leash when it's tied back when you show it it's coon scent and on the tree and it, 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 it's successfully tracked and found the tree now this this first one's going to be in the daytime and these are some the tips i'm giving you guys here is use a stuffed animal because it's going to prepare your puppy to not be scared when it does see a, a live coon i mean when you go from a little a little rag with coon scent on it to a big old giant coon that smells like that rag you're going to be surprised and some dogs get put off but we're going to prepare that puppy to see that coon um, by using a stuffed animal and we're going to um we're going to prepare that puppy to get to a tree and stick on a tree and and tree by instilling that bark in them and uh there's a there's a lot of different ways and the reason why i said daytime is because from here on out after you get a first maybe two or three successful drags out of your pup the first one in the daytime and remember the doubling back on the, your same track these first few drags is very important because we'll talk about that in just a minute but um first couple is in the daytime double back on your drags um use a stuffed animal and leash your puppy pack uh back to get that bark out of them and make sure you're not um, scolding them too much for barking and let them when they do start to bark let them settle into their good a good roll and before you shut it down because it develops some good for having a good mouth and they'll figure out their locates and they'll figure out their chop mouth on track or ball on track or ball on tree they'll, they'll get that figured out a little bit ahead of time and it'll be it'll do you some good so Two or three of those in the daytime then you're going to switch over to nighttime after that first initial few drags that you get done in the daytime and a successful drag is the dog has done everything that you want it to it's kept a high energy drive it has kept a, a good bark rolling on itself it has treed really good and stayed treed and stayed attentive at the tree it hasn't followed up and not hit the track and not even treed I mean, we want our pups to be doing exactly what we want them to do. And these first couple are going to be easy. We're going to switch it over tonight. You're going to run a couple easy ones at night. Once you get success out of that, you're going to, you're going to do what I call a surprise drag. Now, the surprise drag, <clears throat> well, you're going to do two things. You're going to do the surprise drag, and then you're going to stop doubling back on your same track. Okay, because this is going to, for one, it's going to expose your puppy. Um, it's kind of like a test for your puppy. And uh, working your dog at night when you're training, 
prepares your dog and gets it used to working in the nighttime, gets it work used to being in the woods at night, it gets it used to being in the dark. Now, <clears throat> that's a big thing. Some dogs are light dogs. They won't go farther than your light shines. Um, make sure you're keeping your light cut off as much as possible. Let your dog work in the pitch black. Um, you should be fine to sit there with your light off while your puppy runs a little bit of a drag. But we're going to get over tonight we're going to get our puppy worked up with the drag uh toy run a drag for him cut the dog off and just shut our light off and wait where we cut him off and he'll go over there and hopefully he'll tree it once he starts treeing you can start in telling him get him get him get him hyping him up hyping him up maybe give him a minute go over there and pet him up get him real excited about it and you're just going to do that process a couple few times all the way you're going to be making these drags just a little bit more difficult um i want to do no spiking no trees at this point or nothing like that um just a good long kind of wavy trails and tracks for them maybe get through some a little bit of a brush nothing too complicated um because you want the best results as you can and you're laying that foundation to step it up a notch at the next level so we're doing the the drags at night now, all of our training now up until we hit a cage coon is going to be at night. So all of our drags are going to be at night. All of everything else is going to be at night besides the first time that we show them a cage coon. <clears throat> and this is going to help your dog be comfortable in the woods. I've had dogs where I only trained them in the day, only showed them coons in the day, only put them in the woods in the daytime and get them out there at night. They, they don't know what they're doing. But in the daytime, they're awesome. So it's just kind of one of those things. It's a, another be pre get ahead of the curve and be prepared. Um, so after you got this done, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same process for bark and track. Um, I kind of included tree on this, but we'll talk about that in just a minute here on the other on the other video. But we're going to repeat the process. We're going to get a fresh dead coon. And we're going to go through the same process again. Only at night. And we're going to get our pup barking at the dead coon. Might have to coax it um, by leashing it back. But once we got her rolling on her pretty good. Then we can start running drags and trees. But I'm going to circle back around to something I forgot to touch on. And that is don't double back on your, your uh, drag tracks anymore. This time go past the tree and walk a different route back to the dog. And this will expose your dog because at this point in time, you'll figure out whether your dog is um, running your scent or it's running the coon scent. Okay, because if it's following your scent, what it will do is it'll blow past the tree, make the route back to you. Um, and this is where you'll find out if your dog's running track backwards because what they'll do is they'll take off and run your scent backwards to the tree now we don't want them running our scent backwards to the tree and they we don't want um them running our scent forward and blowing past the coon and coming back to us so we want to make sure it's clear to the dog don't follow me follow that and this is how you you figure out whether you've done it right or not um for the most part it doesn't matter how good or smart your pup is um they'll probably blow past that tree and make it to you or run your scent backwards to the tree and that's how they're going to find it um no big deal we're just going to work through it run some drags and stuff uh but yeah don't double back on your own scent but we're going to run move over to a, a dead coon rinse and repeat the process and at this point if your dog is barking and tracking okay um, tracking is going to come in the next video too there's gonna to be a section in that because this is when I teach my dogs to track I'm kind of going in order and age but like I said it's a puzzle you got to put all these things together and it's kind of like this stuff comes here this stuff goes here this comes from over here and it's just different timeline kind of stuff I mean some dogs you just got to work with your dog and figure out what it really needs. Some of these things can be out of order. Um, maybe a dog only needs one of these things or one of these tactics. Some dogs don't need any of them. But uh, I'll wrap that section of the video up. 
I mean, we're going to train in at night. Um, dogs track barking, running the track to the tree. And we'll talk about the tree in the next video. All right, thanks for stopping by.